So I did this talk with my friend Sean about intuition and miracles. And we recorded it um, and made it available to people who couldn't make the events. And you had some thoughts about that. So I thought we would capture those on camera. I did. Um, first of all, you guys kind of reminded me how far out there I am. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it made me grateful for our friendship mm -hmm. because I was literally pulled into the middle of the ocean years ago and kept there. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you grab onto my ankle and kind of pull me back down to the earth. Kind of like, okay, just want to remind you you're a little different from everybody else because I forget that sometimes. I just think everyone else is like me and everyone else experiences this and it's just not a big deal. And meanwhile, there's all these like questions stirring around in everyone's brains. Like, what? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, you, you, you do have a very unusual job. I mean, you know, you, you do do yeah. this professionally day in, day out. I think that would... Uh, um... To be able to do that at that intensity, I would imagine, does need you to be a bit different, live a bit different, think a bit different. Yeah, it can be really overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, the other day, Chris and I, um, Chris is one of my friends on the island. And the other day he told me that he thought I was too dutiful to the other side. Mm -hmm. And I understand why he said that, because I was getting really overwhelmed and my view of the other side changed where I started viewing them as like the review board with clipboards and they're all about soul's growth and challenging me and having me rise to the occasion and continually raise the bar. Mm -hmm. And so that caused some problems for me because my connection was too focused on the other side to where I didn't really feel like I was living my life. And I put such an importance on truth where it's like, well, my thoughts don't matter. My feelings don't matter. My opinions don't matter. All that matters is the truth. And things became really intense and just, I had to kind of like loosen the grip a little bit. Okay. Um, and having them guide me forward. So, so that's curious. Yeah. If you have um, all knowing beings, you've got your very best interests at heart. Um, I'm, I'm interested why, well, I guess to some extent you start losing free will, don't you? Which is, yeah. When I first started doing this, me and my friend, we were kind of developing our intuition at the same time. We both approached the other side and said, we don't want to have free will. Like we would rather you just take our free will away. Cause it was just easier. Like they're all knowing they know what to do. Like they're all knowing we're not. And we're mm -hmm. short-sighted compared to them. So that's why I was like, okay, I'm just going to defer to you guys for everything. But then that's not really us learning lessons either. Mm -hmm. You don't, you know, um, a lot of times the other side won't tell me what to do. They'll just show me things. Like, okay, mm -hmm. Christine, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And they'll just show me things and want me to come from a place of heart or compassion or integrity or whatever. So they'll wait for me to do something and step up to the plate as opposed to do this. As a way of yeah, keep, uh, stopping you from sort of uh, abdicating everything. Because then, then, then otherwise you're a really passive consumer of your life. Right. But I think you've said to me that you get a completely different experience when you read for clients. Yeah, so it can be messing you around, as in making you think and and express your. But 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 for clients, it tends to be much more direct. Yes, and with clients, they'll also have me share my personal experience with them sometimes mm -hmm. because I mm -hmm. can relate to what they're going to going through on a personal level, and that's one of the reasons why I'm reading for them. That's one of the reasons why they ended up on my calendar. Because okay. not only am I able to connect to their spirit guides, but I'm able to completely relate on a personal level to what they're going through and the lessons that I learned I'm able to share with them. Mortal to mortal. <laughs> so, so, so I, I guess they, uh, you are, your experience in terms of getting information is, is different when you're asking personally versus asking for a client. And when you're asking for a client, it's fairly direct. 
yeah for it's, you it's, i guess they're trying right. to uh well you know uh, we all have uh, well the, the uh, preserve preserve your free will and your ability to learn lessons and generally have a good time whilst being incarnated kind of thing yes yes <laughs> basically um yeah so there was a bunch of stuff because like, i was talking about my experience um and that caused you to um clarify a few things which i thought was interesting okay, and have you got your notes yeah i do okay that's why i was going to ask which experience i don't know you you just <laughs> okay. said another thing you said yeah that that was kind of that kind of made sense but then then you you had uh I, th I think one of them was I, I thought that um, I made the point in my talk that I, th I felt that everybody had access to the same sorts of information and that I might, to the extent that pe people around me felt that I got more than others, it might be just that I was better at, at noticing um, or or respecting the information that I, that I get. And I, th I think you were saying that um, the more you make better use of, of stuff, the, the more you're going to get or something. Yeah, um, you were saying that intuition is always coming through. It's just subtle, mm -hmm. and that's true. That's one of the things that's kind of annoying is it can be really subtle, but you're always plugged in, and that's mm -hmm. why the best way to hear them is to raise your vibration. Mm -hmm. And you can raise your vibration just by being calm, uh, with gratitude, with self-love, and essentially just quieting your mind. That's why the other side likes to come through when we're doing dishes or when we're in the shower, because our mind is mm -hmm. quiet and we're focused on other stuff. So that's true. I felt like my intuition became stronger the more aligned with truth I was, the closer mm -hmm. aligned to the divine that I was in my daily life. Am I pursuing my life purpose? Am I you know, pursuing the romantic partner that's good for me and it's a healthy relationship and I'm coming from a place of self-love. Mm -hmm. And I felt like my intuition got stronger as I put one foot in front of the other on this path. Like, okay, I'm gonna announce to the world, I'm a psychic medium. Okay, I'm gonna announce to the world, I'm a Reiki master healer. Like the more I spoke my truth and really took those leaps of faith and put myself out there, I mm -hmm. felt my intuition get more and more sensitive. Like my gut is just super sensitive. My gut okay. responds to everything. If I exaggerate, I go, <sighs> you know, that's an exaggeration. Mm -hmm. Not the truth. That's an exaggeration. If I, you know, try to play a practical joke on Chris, <sighs> it'll feel like somebody just kicked me in my gut because mm -hmm. it's considered deception. Okay. You're deceiving him. So, so you didn't yeah. have that kind of experience before you sort of got on path as it were not at all i mean I, I guess i all. i do feel i mean my kind of metaphor is if, if i'm on path and doing the right things and going in the right direction yeah i will get more better quality information and yeah it's almost like you tuned in a little bit more you yeah. know um, yeah so what would you do if, if you were somebody who who wanted to get more intuitive information in your life, what would you do? I would take a closer look at my life. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I would look at is, am I just chasing the dollar? Mm -hmm. Am I just chasing the dollar and, oh, let me try to manifest. What was that thing that you said, like people trying to manifest with a $100 bill? What was that? They're sticking $100 bills above on the ceiling above their bed and, and you know, allegedly that makes more $100 bills turn up. Oh, geez. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So that's basically just saying, hey, I just want money. Are you coming from a place of heart, you know, or, or, or are you coming from a place of ego? Mm. So I would encourage people to focus on your talents. And obviously life purpose is one of my specialties. So I love doing life purpose readings for people. Mm -hmm. Focus on your talents and what you have to share with the world and then come from a place of heart as opposed mm -hmm. to greed. And I just want money. And also just keeping up with the Joneses, you know, yeah. like that kind of mentality is also your ego and caring what other people think. So I would focus on keeping your heart open to humanity and what you can do to help the community. Volunteer work is great. Um, you know, volunteering mm. to help animals, especially, you know, because they don't have a voice. So, um, so and then also the... just, and then also just like love life, make sure. Mm you're demonstrating self-love because if you're in some sort of abusive relationship or you're just using somebody for money or whatever, mm. 
that lowers your vibe. It pulls you away mm. from the divine. And I guess once you start, you know, you're going to get, start getting stuff, you know, if, if you are, you know, focusing on things, which are, which are more than just chasing money and possessions and all that sort of thing. Yeah. At some point you're going to start to feel good about doing some things and less energetic about doing other things. You're going to get ideas pop into your head when you're in the shower and stuff like that. And some, you know, and so you can kind of start marching in the direction, but then get, um, get calibrated as you, um, as you go forward and sort of fine tune the direction. And I mean, I, I know I do that a lot. I'll, I'll sort of charge off in one direction. And it's like, Oh, this feels a little bit wrong. I'll just, you know, um, fine tune and go in another way or something like that. Well, that's why I'm so big on intuitive development. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I mean, it could save your life, <laughs> mm. you know, like I was talking to somebody the other day that just didn't want to do it. And I was like, Oh, please. Why would you not want to do it? There's a value in this. Like there's value. Why, why, why would you not want to do it? I mean, you end up being well, happier and more connected. Well, sometimes there's fear, you know, like okay. the religion thing. Um, you know, you're going to connect to demons or whatever, or you're just a bad person for doing it. Um, uh. Fear of, I, I, I'm, I'm hearing ego. They're saying ego, like your ego mm -hmm. just gets in the way. I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that is going to be one thing, isn't it? If you, uh, if your ego tells you that you are everything you need to be to be a success in this world, then um, checking in with uh, with the other side to uh, to get direction and that sort of thing, it's not good for your ego, is it? You know. Yeah, if you think you know best, but geez, I don't put myself ahead of God. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, mean, I guess some people do, but. Uh, I guess I some don't people know. don't like the answers they get either. Yeah. Yeah, no, they'll be um, charging off and it's, and, and it's like, it's inconvenient to hear that what you've been doing for the past five years is not quite right. Or that yeah. an extra $10,000 I mean, a year is not going to make you happy, you know? Yeah, I mean, I try to be gentle in sessions. Mm. It's definitely not, hey, go dive into the deep end of the swimming pool or go quit your job tomorrow. But <laughs> if they're in transition, it's very gentle. But it's mm. like... Okay, let's talk and, about what you're supposed yeah, to be think, doing. <laughs> that brings up another thing that, that sort of came up that we discussed is I, you know, this is error prone stuff. It's not necessarily error prone from, from sort of the other side, but our interpretation and our ability to listen and all that sort of thing is, um, you know, we are mortal beings who can get things wrong. And so I would tend to be kind of cautious, you know, if, I'll listen to my intuition if it's a, if it's a small deviation, but it would be, you know, if I, if, if I heard a thunderclap and it's like, you know, you should quit your job and, and go and move to, you know, I don't know, Timbuktu or something like that. Um, you know, I, I would not, I would want confirmation about that. I would want to walk up to that carefully. I would want, you know, I would want multiple intuitive hits that are telling me that I'm going in the right direction. And as I gently moved in the right direction, I would want to be feeling warm and fuzzy about it. Cause I think otherwise you can end up in a situation where you're, you're either listening to your ego, you know, and we can all kid ourselves about what we're listening to. Um, or you've got, you know, uh, maybe less helpful entities, uh, whispering in your ear. You can confirm it. And the way I, the, the, the personal experiences that I've had where I know what I'm doing isn't what I'm supposed to be doing like anymore mm -hmm. is like things just, I'm a, I'm a fish swimming upstream. Like everything, and everything's just, hard. Every, everything is just a pain in the butt. Like yeah. if the other side, if the other side doesn't want me to go to lunch and they like want me to work out instead, mm. I'll be like, no, no I want to eat first and, and I'll go running later or whatever. <laughs> and I go eat. There'll be like a screaming baby next to me. Mm. You know, the bartender will ignore me. Like you can't, you can't find your car keys. It's a, to yeah, get it's, there. A tr it's a trip. It's mm. a trip. Cause I'll be like, come on, you know, like it's, and so I'll find out that the reason they wanted me to go running was because it was going to rain. <laughs> okay. See, now you're not going running because it's raining. See, you didn't listen to us, blah, blah, blah. So they're not always forthcoming with the reasons why. They just tell me, do laundry tonight. Uh, yeah. No, I'm doing laundry tomorrow night. Do laundry tonight. 
And so it turns out I was too tired from running errands in Kahului. Mm. So I ended up not doing laundry the next night, which is why they wanted me to do it the previous night. So they're trying to help me. But, you know, I, to be honest, between you and me, I don't understand why they don't just say you're going to be too tired tomorrow night. They want they want that trust. They want that faith and that trust where I just listen to them. Mm. But it would have been nice if they're just like, you're going to be too tired tomorrow night. You know, like I had some sort of explanation and they just. Do you ever get that kind of explanation? Because I kind of, I, I don't have. I'm not going to say never. Um, the divine shows me things. Like, mm -hmm. you know, this recent trip to LA, like visiting friends and family, because I really miss my friends and family. I'm, I'm constantly complaining about how much I miss my friends and family. You know, the mm -hmm. divine moved me to Maui, and, and, and I'm constantly complaining how much I miss my friends and family. And it actually ended up affecting my relationship with the divine, because I was mm -hmm. getting mad at him. And not really appreciating my life. Not really mm. appreciating my path. And so that was negatively affecting my relationship with him. Mm. So I went home to LA and mm. I just kind of felt like a fish swimming upstream. Mm. You know, my gym locker got broken into and, you know, they stole my credit cards and stuff. Like, and it just, visiting my friends and family was fantastic. I, I totally missed them and it was great mm. to see them again. And I got my cup filled up. But when I flew back to Maui, I swear it was like this vacuum suck, like pulling mm. me back to the island. It was like this red carpet had just rolled out and like mm. sucked me back into the so, island. So, so I think <laughs> there's, there's a couple of things there. One is um, the, you know, just as if you're on path, then you're going to be getting more information. You're going to be getting more guidance and things are going to be working. If you see them, you're going to turn around and find that the thing you need is, is just right there. Yeah. As if by magic. Uh, but the, the, the flip side of that is, uh, if you're, uh, if you feel like you're swimming upstream and nothing's working, uh, you know, I think particularly in Western culture, we are taught to keep going, you know, yeah. and, and we make plans and, and we are, we are a more effective, uh, executive or, or worker or something. If we, if we make things happen. And I think that really just like, okay, this is not working. You know, I'm going to chill out here. Everything seems to be going wrong. That is your sign that whatever you're doing, you're not meant to be doing. It just, yeah, it doesn't feel right. And it's like, you'll almost just feel like your current situation is just like dying. Like the, the, the boss that you loved just left. Um, your coworkers are being really annoying. Like, you know, you're trying to get in get something out of like the vending machine and it won't come out, you know, with the office or something like it's just things around you. Just you, you start to question like what is happening in this situation. And so the way I describe it is you do not have the support of universal energies and what you're doing. That's the way I describe it, because I, I can feel it like you're not aligned with truth. You're not aligned with self love. Like you technically don't have the support of universal energies and what you're doing. And so that's why I'm very sensitive to like being on Maui. Like, am I still supposed to be here? You know, like, am I still supposed to be here on Maui? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So apparently we're having technical problems. <laughs> Simon's computer just crashed. No. Uh-oh. Okay, well, maybe he'll come back. <laughs> this was supposed to be a discussion. Maybe it's like a, maybe he'll rejoin. Um, you know what? I'm going to ask him if he can. Can you rejoin? This is 19 minutes already? Jeez, we can talk. <sighs> He's, let's see what's up. Okay. <laughs> this was supposed to be a discussion. I'm trying to think like what else I want to share with you guys. Um, I kind of wanted to talk to him because it was, he, he did a, a session at a conference called Intuition and Miracles. I was like, oh, that was cool. And it was just, it was just cool to listen to different people's perspective um hi okay i think he's back i am back yay welcome back okay i, kept, I, don't... I kept chatting so oh did you oh cool all right i yeah, have no myself. idea what's gonna happen to the recording, <laughs> but hey um that was fun i've never had that before 
Um, anyway, where were we? What did you go on? Continue the conversation. <laughs> oh, I, w- I was just saying, like, you lose the support of universal energies and what you're doing. Mm. Mm. Um, so it's it's more than. I mean, okay, they're saying pray. They're saying mm-hmm. pray. They're coming through and they're saying pray. Okay, they're they're, they're talking to me right. Now. <laughs> they're saying. They're saying when she's confused and the answer isn't clear, she prays. Like she mm-hmm. goes to she goes to church every Sunday and she prays and she says the rosary after mass. So that's all true. I mm-hmm. stay after church and I say the rosary and the intention that I set before the rosary is please bring me clarity regarding the situation because I don't know what to do. And that's also why I kind of had to loosen my grip on them a little bit is because I felt like it wasn't okay for me to be confused. And it's like, Mm -hmm. sorry if I get emotional, but this is just kind of a sore subject for me. Um, I just felt like I couldn't be confused. And Mm -hmm. if I was confused, it was my fault and my problem. And I'm on the clock and I better figure it out soon. And I also felt like it wasn't okay to be a human being that I'm a mortal. I'm an imperfect mortal, just like everybody else. And it's so funny because I think that's why um, I find it refreshing to hang out with people who are like drinking and smoking and making mistakes. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm a mortal. I'm an, I'm an imperfect mortal and it's okay to be human. Like it just, it's just a sore subject for me because I really felt all this pressure to be perfect because mm-hmm when you're dealing with the divine on a daily basis, it's, it's intense. And so you kind of lose your lighthearted nature. And so I had to bring back my personality and my sense of humor and my lighthearted nature and just be like, okay, it's God. (laughs) It's God asking you to step up to the plate. And, um, but you know, it's, you don't have to be perfect and just try to take some of the pressure off yourself. Mm -hmm. Because things just got really intense and um, I had to kind of like take a step back and keep things in perspective and just, yeah, calm down Mm because the the pressure was just getting to me. And it's like, I'm sorry, but you know, what kind of psychic walks around calling themselves the absolute? That title was given to me. They gave it to me. It was like, it started out as like voice of the angelic realm. And then they watched me and they, you know, saw like mm-hmm. what I did and how I handled myself. And they're like, okay, now we want you to call yourself the absolute. Like mm-hmm. I had to like graduate to that level or something, but walking around calling yourself the absolute people are like, well, excuse me. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't know that you're perfect. And that's really what it was. I have to be perfect. I can never be wrong. I always have to be right. And I was just like crumbling under the pressure and yeah, they're saying insecure. They said she got really insecure. Mm-hmm. So I knew I was going to cry in this video. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's like our my relationship with the divine just got more and more tense. And I would start yelling and just getting mad at him. And then I would get insecure about yelling at the divine. And I'm really sorry if I'm offending anyone watching because I would be offended if someone told me they were yelling at the divine. Um, and then I would get insecure about yelling at the divine because it would make me it would just make me assume that he like hated me after that well i know you're mad at me i know you hate me because i've been yelling at you so you know what whatever and then i would like push him away and just feel ashamed of myself and that's like the quickest way to flush yourself down the toilet is just feeling ashamed of yourself it's like casting darkness at yourself all day every day and it's like you just Mm -hmm. it's just a downward spiral so that's why it's really important to give yourself love. And so he would always come through and say, self-love, self-love, self-love. And so I would have to say, I kind of pulled myself out of that by realizing that it's okay, you know, to be human, but also the self-love and the gratitude. Mm -hmm. Focus on self-love and gratitude. And that will really help you. And just, Mm -hmm. it's, it's not even, it's not even just, I'm going to go get a massage or I'm just going to go buy myself flowers. It's like, how are you treating yourself throughout the day? What is that inner dialogue? Are you proud of yourself? Are you giving yourself a break? Cause I feel like we judge ourselves more than the other side judges us. Like I just constantly thought they were just judging me with clipboards and I'm like, well, I know I failed your test today. So whatever, you know, and, cause they're all about soul's growth. And so I developed this like insecurity and just like fear, just, you know, and just not having the faith and trust that I needed. And Mm -hmm. so now 
I see him as like a loving God and I've got that like faith and trust back that he's going to like take care of me and he's loving. But, you know, Simon, it was the path. It was this path. This path just this path just got to me. I was like, what path, what path is this? You know, you pull me away from my friends and family and I know they're like, you know, trying to boost my self-love and everything. There's a reason for it. You know, I'm like, you, you put me on Maui and I look like an ungrateful douche you know, for, for sitting here and, and just constantly missing my friends and family when I'm on this beautiful island. They, you know, had me go through my savings, my 401k, my equity in my condo. They had me like spend all my money on, on, you know, living in hotels. I still live in a hotel still after years, I still live in a hotel. Um, that was like a leap of faith doing that. And, you know, just all of it, like I, I mean, my leaps of faith are, are just, many and just even becoming a psychic medium and leaving marketing, you know? Um, and that was a leap of faith to tell all my marketing clients, mm -hmm. you know, Hey, I'm going to go talk to dead people. And even just the Mark Foster videos, I was so mm -hmm. mad at them about the Mark Foster videos. That was a leap of faith. It's like, why, why did you set me up to fail? Like, why did you have me make the, like everything was just, it was just hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I, I started becoming very distrustful and just angry at them. And I'm having problems because they want me to write a book about my life. And I don't want to because I just don't want to relive it all. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just painful. It was painful and I don't want to relive it. And so there's like stops and starts where I'll sit there and I'll write and then I'll stop and I'll sit there and I'll write and I'll stop. And they're like trying to get me to journal and then I'll write and then I'll stop. It's like, I just won't keep going. And it's because I just don't want to relive all the feelings. So this is hard and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. They're asking me to do it. I'm going to do it. But it's just, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm they're saying you're hurting <sighs> anyway, but yeah, you know, obviously if you're someone who's hurting, who are you going to turn to for healing the divine? Right. <laughs> so it's just hard. I was struggling with loneliness and, you know, I was also struggling with the fact that me and Chris Wood's relationship, you know, basically evolved into brother, sister, mm -hmm. um, you know, that was a, a tough transition for me. Um, we're, we're still friends, mm. but it evolved into like more of a brother sister kind of dynamic. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's been hard. <laughs> it's been hard, but I mean, that's the reality of the situation. I mean, I don't know. Does that like, does my story like give you any insight into the other side or does it scare you? <laughs> I don't want to scare you. I think um, you, know, you if if we're to view intuition as a muscle and if we're to which I think we've discussed before, like the more you use it, the more the more in touch you with it and the more it happens and then it's quite you know, it's it's not gonna be unexpected to um uh, that that you're gonna have a more intense experience than than those of us that that might phone you up occasionally and ask you things and and go about our daily lives yeah. and i also think that it's a job that's quite lonely um and probably quite emotionally intense too because you're you're often you know speaking to people who are at a moment of vulnerability you're you're acting as the the gateway to you know uh, a more spiritual realm for them so they're always going to be um you, you're seeing everybody at the most vulnerable talking about the most detailed stuff or most uh, the most precious stuff should we say and you know if you were doing that as a therapist 
there would be a um you know protocols and processes around you to keep you personally safe doing that and unfortunately where we are as a society um you know uh, being an intuitive counselor is is uh still very much a solo profession that you kind of keep quiet about quite often yeah. so it doesn't surprise me that yeah you have a tough time every now and again but i also think everyone's going through that kind of stuff as well um i think that's know. why they promote gratitude so much mm -hmm. because it's almost i mean i'm not going to make too much of a generalization out of it but it's almost like a lack of gratitude is associated with arrogance mm. and humility and gratitude really kind of go hand in hand there's like a humility mm. associated with being grateful for things it's like kind of mm. coming off your high horse and noticing that the blessings that you have and so i really feel like staying in a state of gratitude and honestly like i i had to really i would have to say check myself i had to check myself and realize that this path was hard and it was very lonely for me and mm. i struggled a lot and i banged my head against the wall a lot but i also need to be grateful for what the divine did for me you know, he really did develop my self-love. And I mean, it's just, I mean, my intuition, I, you know, I'm, I'm guided to food at the grocery store. I mean, they mm. help me with the smallest things. I'm, you know, like I'm guided to different things. Oh, I feel bloated today. Ooh. And the next thing I know, they're having me eat like asparagus and stuff. And I'm like, mm. oh, and look, you know, asparagus is a diuretic. Like it, it, I mean, I get guided forward with the smallest things. So I, kind of had to check myself and realize it's like this is a blessing <laughs> and, and, and your high that, horse. This is a blessing yeah and isn't that that's an interesting thing though that a lot of times we view intuition as being um uh you know go, go talk to somebody and there's a thunderclap and and you get half an hour of um uh information about what you should do with the rest of your life but it can also be very mundane day-to-day -day stuff and i think that's often a a fun game to play with yourself is, you know, just, just going through daily things and, and, you know, decisions which aren't massively consequential and just, you know, pick up one fruit, pick up the other fruit. What do you feel? You know, that sort of stuff. Um, you know, there's, uh, that, that, that's a, I, from my view, that's a great way of, of, um, going through the world and, and feeling connected. Should we say? Um, and I think, that then can, you know, I mean, and, and I think also, by the way, you're, you're, um, you're getting into a loop about, uh, you know, um, feeling you had to do everything right and perfect and that sort of stuff. My bet is that is an aspect of your personality that you will have encountered before, you know, before you became, you know, before you started developing your intuition and started becoming some a sort of professional psychic, I think you know, that, you know, just because you have a better connection doesn't mean that your uh, human frailties and personality disappear. If you see what I mean, you know, you're going to tackle or you're going to uh, deal with uh, any information you might have from the divine. You're going to deal with that in the same way that, um, you know, you would have dealt with, with stuff when you were 10 or 15 or something like that. You um, and I suspect, uh, it might very well be that you were qu quite a perfectionist and, you know, quite a perfectionist about your appearance or all that sort of thing when you were younger as well. Um, I don't know. I was more the class clown, but <laughs> I have never seen you not immaculately made up. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. But it's true. <laughs> and, 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 and most I got my Tommy be... Bahama Hawaiian shirt on today. Yeah, but most people can't be bothered to put the effort in like that. Really? <laughs> really? Yes. You might live in an LA bubble, but let me let me reassure you that. <laughs> yeah, Maybe with the be... pandemic. I don't no, know. I mean, no. on Maui, I don't always look so perfect. I mean, we've got trade winds, we've got rain, heat, humidity. Mm -hmm. I don't. Mm. I don't know. That's that's a nice mm. compliment, but <laughs> it looks. So, I don't always look so great here. It's you know, mm. especially after a run like a sweaty mess but um yeah. I've, I've got to do my perfect amount of exercise yeah 
Mm-hmm. I think I, I think that was one of the things that I felt like I kind of lost was my sense of humor and lighthearted nature and personality. Mm-hmm. And because the other side can be kind of intimidating. Mm-hmm. And I think I, I think I became intimidated. Yeah, they're saying she was insecure. She just became insecure. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to. What, what what do you think they did to help you become more secure? It's like they just kept saying like self love and mm-hmm. pray and gratitude. And they had me do Reiki on myself. Mm-hmm. They had me do a lot of Sahiki, which is the Reiki symbol for mental and emotional health. Mm-hmm. Um, I just kept getting like down on myself. And it's, mm. it's, it's not a good belief system to have when you think the divine is mad at you or he hates you or he's just constantly judging you because mm. you're a spark of the divine. And so it was like losing touch with my divinity. So I literally had to just change my belief system. The divine doesn't hate me. He's not mad at me. He's a forgiving mm. God. But, mm. you know, obviously we have free will, so it's okay to own your free will decisions, but there's you know, consequences for those free will decisions and there's karmic ramifications for everything. So it's just, you know, making sure, you know, your karma is clean and you're treating others as you would like to be treated and yeah, respecting others. Yeah. See, they, they were saying that, um, I was disrespectful to them and okay. I knew I was disrespectful to them. And so that also contributed to everything. So mm. I think I needed to start treating the other side better and stop yelling. And that took a while for me to get out of that angry phase where mm-hmm. I just wouldn't stop yelling. Petulant just, child kind of things. Yeah. I just, well, I couldn't, I couldn't control myself. It was like a pot bubbling up on a stove mm-hmm. where I, I would just get like triggered by them. Mm-hmm. You know? Cause I mean, they mm. actually do keep me on a pretty short leash. Mm. <laughs> I mean, you know, no sugar, no alcohol, no caffeine. You know, I go running three days a week. I play tennis one day a week. It's always, you know, like go exercise. You know, to, and then it's, it's it's just a really like my lifestyle is just a really short leash. Um, and I, I guess I got to a point where I'm like, this is just really unforgiving, and I started appreciating it less and less, and just getting really pissy. Well, and also let's just remember that you know we have spent two and a half years in you know the the most bizarre situation you know we haven't had a global pandemic for a hundred years yeah i think all of us coming out of it now go oh yeah that was uh that was quite the mental health experience even if we thought we were doing all right at the time yeah you know um so should we leave it there i don't know how long we've been going but that that, that seems to be a, a good uh, a good uh, place to stop right now and i'm sure we can do this again yeah um okay that was that was a good convo this is the you know Decently just, long video. This. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for okay. recording this. I appreciate it. This was a good conversation.